Hello everyone, my name is Protesilaos, also known as Prot. The other day I did an introductory video to keyboard macros in Emacs. I went through the basic uh, key bindings, uh, covered some of the more advanced uh, functions. Uh, I discussed how you can uh, store and reuse your keyboard macros using the macro ring. Uh, then I uh, addressed the issue of how to uh, store your uh, keyboard macros for use in future sessions by assigning a name to them and by outputting their definition in a pure eLisp which you can then uh, save in a file and then load that file and have the macro ready for you to be used. What I didn't do in that uh, video is uh, demonstrate uh, in practice the real benefits of uh, using uh, keyboard macros uh, to solve various problems. Uh, I did that on purpose uh, because I was following um, the structure of the official manual which is uh, very theoretical and very uh, step by step. Uh, so that's why I focused more on the key bindings and on the, uh, the general concepts and not on the implementation of these in uh, real world uh, conditions. Uh, so what I have uh, done today is build on that uh, foundation of knowledge through a series of uh, uh, simulations of uh, real-world uh, scenario. Uh, here, in these examples here that I have in the Emacs uh, buffer in front of me, uh, uh, each of these scenarios is designed to make use of uh, keyboard uh, macros, as well as some features of Emacs that I consider um, complementary uh, to the use of macros, or uh, particularly useful when working with uh, macros. Uh, so uh, what you are about to see is a series of clips that I recorded uh, separately, uh, just to make sure uh, that the flow of each uh, example is uh, seamless. And uh, that's why in these clips, I will not be uh, describing in uh, detail everything that is going on. You will have to rely more on the screen key, which is the program that outputs my input uh, to the keyboard at the lower part of the screen. And uh, hopefully through these examples, you will be inspired uh, to incorporate keyboard macros in your daily routines. Uh, just to say that uh, the solutions that I provide to the various problems that you will see are, are not necessarily the most optimal ones. They, these are the solutions that I have come up with given uh, the present state of my knowledge as an Emacs user for the last month or so. And uh, the whole point of this is to exactly uh, showcase that even if you are not very good with defining keyboard macros, you can still uh, uh, have uh, productivity gains uh, by using them. Anyhow, I, do, I want to cut short this introduction. Uh, let's proceed on uh, with the demo. Thank you very much for your attention for this uh, uh, part. On with the clips. Goodbye from my side. So this test here asks us to capitalize and quote everything to the right of the word hello. Let's do just that. We start by recording a macro, kill this, quotes, then come back here, do that, come down, close the macro, and then uh, run it another three times. Done. Okay, so this one wants us to start from the number 20 and add uh, lines, numbered lines, until we reach number 35. Okay, so we, the first thing we want to do is assign the value 20 to the keyboard uh, macro counter. And now we want to define our macro, and this macro should insert the counter and then create a new line, and this closes the macro. And now we want to run this macro another 15 times. Done. Okay, this one here is a bit trickier. It asks us to remove all capital letters and spaces between uh, the letters here. Then, one, then once we have done that, uh, hyphenate the output. What I want to do here is I want to uh, uh, use another notion of Emacs, which is the narrowing of the buffer 
and I will explain a bit why I am doing this. First, let me narrow uh, to this region and we do that by pressing Ctrl X and then N and N. Now I want to uh, make a copy of that line and I will explain uh, later, I will use this to explain later why we need to narrow the region. So let's come here and uh, proceed with our uh, problem which is to remove all the capital letters and the spaces in this line. Let's start by recording our macro. We want to delete those two characters, delete that as well, close the macro. And now, here comes the part. We want to rerun this macro for as long as there are no errors and as soon as an error occurs to exit the macro. In this case, an error uh, would, uh, would uh, be met if it reaches the end of the buffer and the end of the buff buffer because we have narrowed the region is right here so this gives an error so let's come here and let's uh, execute the macro this way by prefixing uh, meta and zero and we execute and we get this nice result here okay so let me uh, quickly rewind this you see i do it step by step you see what's going on Let's rewind this and let me show you what happens. Assume now that you have this and you have some more text here that should remain intact. Okay, and let's come here and let's redefine the macro. We do this and then we go there and we do that and we close this. And now we want to run it until we find an error. This will mess up with the text in the line below. Look at this. You see we have some noise at the end, it really messed up with things. That's why it is very useful uh, to narrow specifically to where you want to operate because then you can uh, run the macro without fearing or without any fear of interfering with the rest of the text. Okay, we know that we are here now. And uh, now what we want to do with this, the next uh, part of this problem, is to hyphenate this. So again, we are recording a macro. This should do that and then come here and close this macro and rerun it this way. Done. So this test here asks us to keep the initials of the words that are placed here. Uh, the placement of these words is uh, done uh, totally in random. Let's proceed. We start by recording our macro. We want to move like that, delete this, close the macro, and then run it another four times. Done. This test here wants us to produce a horizontal and a vertical line with the counts uh, 1 uh, through 10. So let's do just that. Before we record the macro, we want to copy that line and now we want to clean it up a bit and now let's start with our macro this should be simple go there and close the macro and now uh, rerun this another seven times there we have it done okay, this one wants us to generate all prefixes of emacs so emacs emac ema etc let's do just that we start recording a macro we go to the end of the word kill backwards do that copy and close the macro and let's repeat this another sorry let's repeat this another three times done okay so i copied the output of the last command now it wants us to reverse the sequence of that uh, output so these lines uh, the one with the fewest characters should come at the top and the other one come down at the bottom uh, let's think outside the box uh, for a second here mx short lines done thinking creatively okay so this one here wants us to convert uh, these lines into an array i copied and adapted this from the website vimgolf.com and i admit already at the outset that my solution uh, could be improved uh, further but i still need to think about it and i have not figured out the most optimal way to do it Anyhow, let's proceed. Let's record our macro, insert quotes, do that, come back there, and close the macro over there, and then repeat another 
seven times. Okay, close this and uh, done. As I said, this is not the most optimal, but still better than nothing. Okay, so this is another example I got from vimgolf.com. Uh, my solution to this one is superior to the one before. Uh, let's get right to it. It wants us to swap the lines that contain triple A's with the empty line right below them. Let's do just that. We start recording our macro. This time we invoke a search, move one place down, transpose the lines, close the macro, and then run it another two times. Done. Okay, this test here also comes from vimgolf.com. It wants us to remove every line that contains reader and uh, just keep the rest of it. Okay, so this time we will uh, operate on a region as I showed in the previous video. Let's start recording a macro. Now we want to search for reader and we want to kill this line and now we want to close the macro. We want to select this region and we want to operate on the region. We close that and we are done. So this one here wants us to convert these into HTML links and then do the same uh, in markdown format. Let's start. We record our macro. Now we want to search for that. Kill. Uh, ah, sorry, these are the HTML. So let's hope that this will not mess up with these typos, will not mess up with the macro. Okay, three of them. Let's move down. Hopefully, they will not mess things up. Let's run this another two times. Looks good to me. Let's move to the next one. Uh, so the same approach for Markdown. You mark, you search, you come back, you kill, place the square brackets, remove the blank. By the way, if you know how I can remove the blank uh, right on the spot here, that would be greatly appreciated. And let's rerun this another two times. Done. Okay, so this is the last example. This one also comes from uh, vimgolf.com and I will be doing this a bit uh, slowly because uh, it involves uh, two separate uh, macros and because it's also a big chunk of text, uh, it's better that you uh, have a sense of what is going on. So we have to swap the position of uh, the person with their pet. So every reference to lamb should in fact be a reference to Mary and uh, vice versa. So let's do just that. First, we want to record the macro. Now we want to search for Mary. We move the point backward and now we set a mark and now we search for lamb. And with the space between them, we kill it in order to have these next to each other so that we can transpose them. And once we have done that, we come back and put the play, the text where it was. Let's close this macro. And we see here that the next occurrence of lamb is over there and then Mary is uh, the line below. Let's run the macro again. Okay, so this is readable now. But now we cannot do this again because we see that we don't have lamb and then Mary. Now we have Mary and then lamb. As such, we have to record a new macro. Let's do this. Now we search for lamb and we come back. It's again the same method, but only in reverse. Mary, kill that, transpose those back there. And this should be correct. This should be correct. Very well. That's it. And now I want to show you what we did, uh, what I did in the previous video where I introduced the key bindings, which is how to manage your macros. So we have defined the two macros that we need, but we just need to cycle through them. Uh, so we need now uh, to uh, rerun this macro here. It's the last one we that we defined. So this is correct. But the one below is the first that we defined. So we have to move to the previous macro that we have defined. Let's do just that. This should be the correct one. Let's run it and uh, see what happens. And it happened. Let's hope that everything is correct. Uh, I am closing this and if I did a mistake, uh, you will read it and you will tell me about it. 
that's all for now folks thank you very much for your attention i hope you learned uh, uh, some uh, something here uh, as i said these are not the most efficient or the most opt optimal solutions to the problems that i have tackled however they should give you some guidance and inspire you uh, to try things yourself as i will be doing myself uh, in the coming days thank you very much for your attention folks goodbye for now